So hello and welcome to another episode of Shit I Should Not Have To Be Doing. Um, you know, I'm a comedian. At the moment I'm supposed to be on tour in Australia and in fact this is supposed to be my week off. That out there is Sydney where I could be soaking up the culture and atmos. But last week was the budget in the UK and I was just assuming, like an idiot, that somewhere the mainstream media would provide some reasonable coverage of what was actually going on. But I'm afraid I've been watching and watching and the answer is no. So, okay, I'm gonna have to do it. Let's just run through what's actually happened. First up, and this should have been the headline in every single newspaper. This budget is more austerity than the budgets that were called austerity ever were. And it's not, it's, it's like it's stealth austerity because what they're actually doing is they're using inflation as a way to sneak in austerity by the back door. The inflation rate is currently soaring at like 10%, some of the highest inflation we've ever had in the UK. And when inflation goes up, tax receipts go up with it, right? So you would reasonably expect as inflation takes hold, income tax will go up. You would reasonably expect that VAT receipts would go up, that all that kind of stuff would rise, you know, in level with the inflation. But at the same time, public spending has been frozen, right? And the things that public services need to spend money on, including things like, you know, transportation, energy, food, all that kind of stuff, those things, the prices of those things are still going up in line with inflation. So effectively, we now have 10% less budget for all of those things. So we should reasonably expect to be getting 10% less healthcare, 10% less education, you know, 10% less support when we need it the most, 10% less for those in our society who have the most urgent need for help and support and are in the toughest of situations. Meanwhile, they are handing out about 90 billion, which is definitely nowhere near the amount of extra revenue they should be expecting to bring in, but they're expecting to hand that out over the next five years. It's almost all of it is going to the very wealthiest and to the big corporations, to the shareholders, right? So we're looking at 29 billion over the next five years in tax breaks. And the idea that that's gonna encourage investment or create jobs, I mean, it's just been disproven. That is gonna go into the pockets of shareholders at big companies and the wealthiest in our society. 15.1 billion is being spent freezing the fuel duty levy, which basically means that the bigger you are as a polluter, the more you're gonna save out of that money over the next five years. And 11 billion on defense, much of which will come back to the weapons companies that, uh, you know, and, to, and then, then from there to their shareholders. And of course, we'll be spent on weapons and you know what weapons do. I mean, they only do one thing, right? They only kill people. So there's no other explanation for what's happening with that money. Now there is, as you will probably have read, the one thing the papers have been reported on, um, 18.1 billion for childcare provision. And don't be fooled by that. First of all, that is nowhere near enough to actually replace the Shore Start centres, which the Tories completely decimated, um, and which were doing a really important job of helping children in their early years and parents with young children. And this new money is going to be pumped into the private sector. Now, there is already a shortage of childcare places in the private sector. So what effectively is going to happen isn't that loads more suddenly open up. What's actually going to happen is that the existing ones, prices are pushed up and pushed up because now everybody can afford you know, a bit more because there's a bit more money coming in to be spent on that. In fact, there are some pieces of research which suggest that this policy will actually end up closing down nurseries by pushing prices through the roof. So the idea that it's actually going to help anyone is, is probably garbage, but we know what they're doing because the Conservatives rating at the polls is much, much higher among men than it is among women. So it's like it's super patronising. It's like, hey girls, we're here for you. Look, here's some funding towards play school. Oh my goodness. Um, plus, they are predicting uh, 4.1 percent inflation in their own models but they're only budgeting for 3.5 percent inflation so there'll be yet more effective austerity if inflation only goes to the level they've predicted and not to the level they've budgeted for which is built into their own predictions and let's not forget that inflation is currently at 10 percent so going oh yeah we think it's going to more than half very very quickly over the next few months i mean is it? Have, when have they been right about these things before? They weren't predicting that inflation was going to get this high 
and now they're saying it's going to come crashing back to the ground. There's no evidence to support that. And if it stays at 10%, effectively, the amount of austerity that we will all have been put through is, yeah, is absolutely off the scale. And yet there is just like zero, zero coverage of this in the media. Instead, there's a lot of fluff about the, you know, the sort of trimmings on the top and about the arguments about it and about whether or not Boris Johnson lied. I mean, the idea that the newspapers are still discussing that when the answer is like, yeah, of course he did. Like, we were all there and we heard him. Oh, it's so depressing. Please, can I have a holiday? Please, can everybody in the mainstream media do their job? And uh, and then we can get back to, you know, like, do you remember the good old days when I just used to do, like, sensible things? Like, you know, talk about abortion and a few legal issues around church and state and separation and all that kind of stuff. Ugh. And now somehow I'm the only person in the media who talks about what's actually happened in the budget. Um, oh well, if you'd like to be kept abreast of issues like this, please consider sponsoring my videos because sadly, I seem to be the only person doing it half the ruddy time. Um, it can cost as little as $12 a year and you get loads of extras and you get a credit if you want one as a producer on every single video and you get my undying love and appreciation. Um, and thank you anyway for sharing this and getting the word out. You don't need to be a sponsor to share this everywhere. And I will see you next week when I'm back from my tour and uh, I look forward to that.